Michael Shoebridge from Strategic Analysis Australia joins me now live from Canberra. Good to talk to you, Michael. In a nutshell, explain to us what changes the government has outlined here. Well, Chris, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors, but the nub of it is after 19 months and two reviews, Richard Miles has realised the Australian Navy is broken and that the plans it has would have meant the old Anzac frigates would have broken and had to be retired before any new warships turned up, which wasn't going to be until about 2032-2033. His new plan gets some new money out of Treasurer Chalmers, about $11 billion over a decade. It's to build 11 new frigates to replace the Anzacs and also get six optionally crewed surface vessels that are like floating missile launchers. The problem is the plan looks like it's being slow rolled in implementation, so the Navy's going to get weaker and smaller well before it starts to grow. Well, this is the point, at least, I mean, on the bright side, it's a recognition as to just the dire straits that our Navy is in at the moment. But let's talk first about that figure. $11 billion over 10 years, you know, a billion dollars a year, that's a rounding error in the defence budget. Well, if it was a billion dollars a year, that would be better than what the government has announced. Instead, it's all backloaded to the last six of the 10 years that it covers. 1.7 billion is spread out over the first four, which means nothing is going to happen fast. So the big failure of all this work and all this consideration by Minister Miles and the defence leadership is that the implementation is underdone and it isn't any faster than the failing old plan. Defence procurement is bogged. Well, the other worry here, of course, is there's the usual industry, political industry incentives to make sure that a lot of this stuff is built in Australia, but at least they're planning to buy some of these vessels overseas so that they're off the shelf, if you like, therefore they, there should be less trouble, uh, we should get them on time if it goes... But we haven't even selected which of these vessels they're going to order yet. That's one of the most amazing things. So a lot of the failure of past programs has been to let the Navy and Defence tinker with designs and take a long time to run beauty contests. Well, there are at least four potential ship designs and four different countries' builders in the mix this time, and it looks like Defence is going to be let do its usual long beauty contest to eventually choose someone. That eats time we don't have anymore but there's no will to change that. It's ridiculous. Uh, laughingly, really, the Deputy Prime Minister, Defence Minister Richard Miles, talked to us about a, a briefing to China. Have a look. We have offered uh, briefings to China uh, in relation to the announcement today, and we stand ready to provide those briefings. But it is really important that you get the diplomacy right when you're doing an announcement of this kind, and that you know, people don't misunderstand what we're trying to do here. I imagine China will be congratulating him heartily, won't they? Well, it's just a jarring contrast with what's happening with the Chinese Navy. Every year they're getting new heavily armed warships. They're getting a lot of armed small drones that are cheap. And our Australian Navy has to wait till the 2030s under this new accelerated plan to get new warships. And there's still no cheap smart drones in the budget. Michael, thanks so much for cutting through the double speak for us. Michael Shoebridge there from Strategic Analysis Australia joining us live from Canberra.